I'm going to take on this topic right here. Second paragraph where they say, the Book of Mormon commands, if you're going to raise up seed unto the Lord, that footnote chapter three, oh, they're saying Jacob, chapter 230 says, the Lord will command polygamy if he's going to raise up righteous seed. Does that hold true? Let's just open up the scriptures, libraries, scriptures, Book of Mormon, and let's go Jacob chapter two. Okay, first half of the chapter, Jacob's laying the smack down um, regarding their seeking for riches. And he tells them in plainness because high priests after the holy order of God, they have a level of access to God that requires them to be clear and straightforward on these things. They're not allowed to beat around the bush. They have to be direct. Now he says, I have to speak unto you regarding a grosser crime. Your grosser crimes, what's that? You excuse yourself in committing whoredoms because of the things that were written concerning David and Solomon. Behold, David and Solomon truly had many wives and concubines, which thing was abominable before the Lord. Okay. I'm going to go over here one more time. Church. Open up the scriptures again. And here's two things that cannot simultaneously be true. I'm just opening up to section 132. This section says, this is the doctrine of David and Solomon having many wives and concubines. Wait, what does a high priest after the holy order of God say about David and Solomon? It's committing whoredoms. You're excusing your whoredoms because of the abominable things being done by David and Solomon. And now, eight years after Joseph Smith's assassination, a spurious revelation comes up saying, well, here's the doctrine which justified David and Solomon in taking upon many wives and concubines. Jacob chapter 2 and Doctrine and Covenants section 132 cannot both simultaneously be true. So, all right, well, let's find out what was happening. Verse 25, the Lord says, I have led this people forth out of the land of Jerusalem by the power of my arm that I might raise up a righteous branch unto me from the fruit of the loins of Joseph. So what was the method that the Lord used with Lehi and Ishmael and their families, it was monogamy. The Lord says, I'm going to raise up a righteous branch. You're not going to do the whoredoms of David and Solomon. You're going to raise up a righteous branch through monogamy. Hearken unto the word of the light. So what's the commandment the Lord gives to the Nephites? There shall not any man among you have a be, save one wife, and concubines, you're going to have none. And he refers to these, polygam these polygamous actions justified because of David and Solomon's abominations, he refers to them as whoredoms. It's synonymous according to the Lord in the scriptures. For if I, the Lord, will raise up seed unto me, I will command my people. What did he just command them? No man among you will have save it be one wife, and concubines he shall have none. That's the commandment of the Lord. So in second, oh, excuse me, in Jacob chapter 2, verse 30, I will command my people to practice monogamy. Otherwise, they will hearken unto the abominations written about David and Solomon. So the oh, truth, yeah, okay, real quick. So that's a different interpretation. Otherwise, yes. but we've we've pointed out the incorrect teachings of the LDS yes. by okay. saying, "Let me give you one more. Let me give you one more." So here's what the Lord says: Because of the wicked, the Lord says, "I have seen the sorrow and heard the mournings of the daughters of my people in the land of Jerusalem." What was happening in the land of Jerusalem, according to verse 32? I will not suffer, saith the Lord of hosts, that the cries of the fair daughters of this people, the Lord's people in Jerusalem which I have led out of the land of Jerusalem to come up against me, against the men of my people. The men in Jerusalem were once again practicing polygamy. And because of that, the Lord leads out a righteous branch who is commanded to practice monogamy. Polygamy was part of the catalyst for destruction of the children of Israel right there in the days of Lehi. And now his son, who gets called as a high priest after the holy order of God because of his direct, there, there's no talk of the keys were passed on to me. Jacob exercised faith to be called as a high priest after the, after the holy order of God for himself. The commandment is one wife, no concubines. You will not be involved in the same whoredoms which caused the destruction of the people of Israel anciently. This is a real good nugget for uh, restoration, uh, RLDS um, version of the restoration. Listening to someone in an LDS background share 
how their church has justified polygamy by resting this scripture in Jacob and uh, continually uh, referencing it as a uh, as a uh, foundation for why it's okay. I mean, this, yeah. this is really when, neat. When the church simply posts verse 30 of Jacob chapter 2 as justification for polygamy, it is complete dishonesty. I mm-hmm. I do not believe that they are that ignorant. And if they are, that is now a conscious decision to be ignorant of the scriptures because you just read the two verses beforehand and the two verses afterwards, and it is as plain as it gets. You get one wife and no concubines if you try to justify your your polygamous whoredoms because of Jacob and Solomon. You're going to be destroyed the same as the children of Israel anciently. And and so now it it here's what it requires similar to King Noah in the book of Mormon. Because of the strict command laid down by Jacob right here and I'm sure this was a part of their record that the Nephites knew there's one wife and there's no concubines. Noah had to move, what, a thousand plus miles away from the Nephite nation proper and put down all the priests of his righteous father and establish his own priests before he can start once again saying, well, because of David and Solomon, I'm now going to have many wives and concubines. He had to move that many miles away, establish his own church leadership after his own adulterous, whorish heart before he could do it. Well, what happened in the days of Joseph Smith? Joseph Smith spent his entire tenure as president of the church fighting against the secret polygamists, which had infiltrated until he's assassinated. And what happens now? Brigham Young moves all those that would follow him a thousand miles away, establishes his own church leadership after his own heart. And what becomes the new and everlasting covenant? It's no longer offering God your broken heart and contrite spirit. The new and everlasting covenant, according to Brigham Young in 1852, is the doctrine of having many wives and concubines, all those who have this law of polygamy revealed unto them must obey the same. And now Brigham Young is teaching the new and everlasting covenant of what? Many wives and concubines with the same abominable connections with, because David and Solomon were doing it anciently, we're justified in doing it now. It was a lie then. It is a lie now. 